I'll read verse 1, we'll read 2 together, and so on through the chapter. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the, and the priests priest could not enter into the, the house of the Lord, because, because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. When all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down, and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement, and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. And king Solomon offered a sacrifice of 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. And the priests waited on their offices, and the Levites also with instruments of music of the Lord, which David the king had made to praise the Lord, because his mercy endured forever. When David praised by their ministry, and the priests sounded trumpets before them, and all Israel stood. Moreover, Solomon hollowed the middle of the court, that there was before the house of the Lord, for there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of the peace offerings because a brazen altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings and the meat offerings and the fat. Also at the same time Solomon kept the feast seven days and all Israel with him a very great congregation from the entering in Hamath to the river of Egypt. And in the eighth day they made a solemn assembly for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days and the feast seven days. And on the third and twentieth day of the seventh month, he sent the people away to their tents, glad and merry heart for the goodness of the Lord has shown up to David and so Solomon to Israel his people. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make the house of the Lord. And in his own house he prosperously effected. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend unto the prayer of this that is made in this place. For, For now I have chosen to sanctify, sanctify this house, that my name may be there forever, and, and my name and my heart shall be there perpetually. <laughs> and as for thee, if thou wilt walk before me, as David thy father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shall observe my statutes and my judgments, <laughs> then will I establish the throne of the kingdom, according as I have with the king and my father saying, There shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel. But if ye turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my hand, which I have given them, and this house, which I have sanctified for my name, will I cast out of my sight, and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. And this house, which is high, shall be an astonishment to everyone that passeth by it, so that he shall say, why hath the Lord done thus unto the land and unto this house? 
and it shall be answered, because they forsook the Lord God and their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, laid hold on their gods, and worshipped them, and served them. Therefore hath he brought all this evil upon them. Let us pray, Lord, we thank you for the word of God. We're so glad we have a, a sure word of prophecy. We're, we're so have, helpful, so thankful for the word of God and these, these uh, uh, admonitions that we have. And the orders that we have and the admonitions and these truths telling of how God deals with mankind in general, then and now, let it be real to us today. On this election day, 2016 where we will elect many uh, different governors and you know, I, I don't know if it's governors now but there's senators I believe senators and and uh, House of Representative and the, the most important position in the world the mightiest position in the world the president of the United States the most powerful position in the world and we pray Lord that people would observe thy word and vote accordingly, please. That's my goal. It's the goal for my church. Be the goal for our nation, hopefully. So bless as we look at the past and we look at the present on this election day, 2016. Give, give open ears to the hearers here and across. This will be out across the internet before the election is settled dear Lord this message will be out it'll be just as relevant no matter which candidate wins the presidential election it'll be just as relevant so bring it bless me Lord fill me with the Holy Spirit help me to preach truth take the Bible position that people can be blessed in this audience and through the internet. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Ah, what a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thing that we have the Word of God, the teaching of the Word of God that can actually direct us and tell us what we should do as a nation. The key verse in this preaching for today is a verse I quote often and many of you know by heart 714 Chronicles set Chronicles if my people save people God's people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their a wicked way. That's the key. There's the key. Turn from their wicked, wicked way. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. America needs to repent. America needs to repent. Whether Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump our elected president the highest, most powerful position in the world. The message that I preach today will be relevant. Doesn't matter which one of them wins. Not, you say, will there be a significant difference as to who wins the presidential candidate? I think there is. I think there will be. And I'm going to tell you the main position that I've had in this presidential election, that election day is today, the main position that I've held throughout all of this coming up to the voting day, the big day, I'm preaching this sermon before the outcome has been decided. But the big issue that I've had in this election, in this cycle, is abortion abortion the murdering of innocent babies this year we have had in the third presidential debate we had the strongest positions that have ever been made by a presidential candidate or candidates 
the positions that were so clearly laid out, and by the way, the positions that were laid out in that debate, which I'll tell you what they were, came from the platform of the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. These positions that were presented by the presidential candidates are the position of their parties. You say, bless God, my, my grandpa was a Republican and I'm a Republican and anybody that ever has anything to do with me is going to be a Republican or a Democrat or an Independent. I'm not here representing a political party. Some very foolishly do. <coughs> they say, well, we, uh, you know, we're in, uh, everybody, everybody in my church, uh, we're all going to vote Republican. They're all going to vote. No, vote according to the Bible. And one of the most horrific things that could ever be done would be murdering an innocent child. Amen. Hillary Clinton, the presidential candidate for the Democratic Party, and presenting their plank of their platform, you can look it up on the internet, you don't have to take my word for it, is that she presented in that election, uh, in that debate, that she personally, and representing the Democratic Party, believed in partial birth abortion. Now partial birth abortion, in case you haven't heard what it is, when a baby, a full-term baby, is being born, when the head of the baby comes out, they bust the skull up and crush the skull, and they take a vacuum cleaner and suck the brains out of the baby and kill it. I, I mean, just, that's a fact. That's not political uh, rhetoric. That's not a talking point. Well, that's a fact. On the other hand, Donald Trump, who supports the Republican Party, that's what we have in America today, it's been for many years, at the, at the final thing, you've got to vote between two people. One the Republicans put up, one the Democrats. Sometimes a third party comes in, they haven't done significantly, they flare up a little bit and then they don't, they don't do very much. Trump's position was, and let me say this, you can check it, it's on the internet. The strongest statement that has ever been made by a presidential candidate was made by Donald Trump. And that position was this. It was that abortion is murder. Abortion is the tearing of a baby from a mother's womb and killing the baby. That's what he said. Now let me tell you something. That's the strongest statement that has, has ever been made. So the position is there. I could go into a whole lot of, you say, oh, but there was a time in, in Donald Trump's life when he was pro-abortion. Yes, that's a fact. But today he's not. Others would say, oh, there was a time in, in Hillary Clinton's past when she was against abortion. That is also true, but it's not what it is today on this election day, is it? So, do presidential candidates and senators and governors and people of that, do they flip-flop because they want to, they, they test the winds and think this might be the goal? Yes, they do. I could go into, and I would, I would spend this sermon, and I would spend uh, hours telling you of the terrible things about Hillary Clinton and about Donald Trump and there's plenty on both sides they're the most hated and 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 it's they're, they're disliked and uh, I mean it's it's about split America in half right now as we're on election day to be determined today it's about 50 50 they say it's about a dead heat coming in that's what they say so whatever that is but whatever happens, the truth that I preach to you today, it'll be the same when we find out who wins this election, okay? And, uh, but it has to be told because America's in trouble. I was on a, I was on a, a live talk show here a few, uh, not, about a month and a half ago. And the moderator of the talk show 
Big John, local moderator here. Big John, 1380. It used to be uh, roof, roof, uh, dog house, and now it's it's a tiger from because Bethune Cookman College, who a fr friend of mine is, is President Jackson. He's my friend. I like President Jackson. I believe he's a good Christian man. I like the man. Uh, he's my friend from Bethune. They they own the radio station now. But we were on there, and a Big John and uh, one of the other, uh, there was four, four, there was three on the panel and Big John, and he made the statement, we were talking about America. Well, two of us on the panel thought America was in trouble. Big John said, I think America's doing great and getting better. His friend. His friend, yeah, the question is where? Yeah, that's my question too. Yeah. Uh, but here's where, because they think that we're finally getting enlightened. We're finally getting enlightened and we figured out that men can marry men and women can marry women. That was one of their points. I don't believe that. You know why I don't believe it? Because this blessed book, this blessed book in the English language, the King James Version of the Bible, this blessed book says that it's uh, wicked. People that do that, we we still have uh, some laws on the book that they will be repealed against sodomy. Did you know what the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah was? Yeah. Homosexuality and other sexual sins. We have a question today. Uh, we have a we have a, a position today. We have the law of the land today favors sodomy and you say well uh, I mean uh, the Bible calls men with men and women with women calls it vile affections so Big John and his buddy Mark of the Beach uh, he used to be a commissioner here in Holly Hill and uh, they thought that America is getting better every day and that we will continue to progress and I mean actually they would call it today the progressive movement people that are progressive people that are progressive they will uh, see these enlightening things and and we can continue to murder babies over a million a year here in America and men marrying men and even this very day there are five more states that are voting on legalizing marijuana and it'll probably be legalized in all five of those states. I mean, liquor like a river. Mar uh, making marijuana legal now. Uh, gambling all over. We thought it used to be a day when Christians and people that were more conservative and not these free crazy thinkers would be against gambling, but, but not anymore. It's not long, there'll be gambling everywhere. There'll be not only marijuana, there'll be, there'll be other uh, drugs that'll be legal. We'll have legal whorehouses all over America. But anyway, uh, we had that, who was that famous basketball player uh, that was in that whorehouse and uh, uh, who was he? Remember, tell me something. Lamar Odom. Huh? Lamar. Oh, yeah. Lamar Odom, and, and everybody felt so, a poor guy overdosed in the whorehouse, and everybody felt sorry for him. He probably, uh, I mean, oh, I, mean, I better not say that. You might uh, <laughs> say that. You say I'm gruel. <laughs> I mean, if he was getting high and shacking up uh, with a whore in a whorehouse, and God killed you, that might even be acceptable. <laughs> Oh, it's getting awful quiet here now. You see, God don't like wicked folks. God doesn't like whoremongers. God doesn't like whores. God doesn't like dope heads that do weird things. Oh, America's in trouble. We read this. He dedicated, he dedicated this temple. Oh, it was splendid. It was glorious. It was, uh, he, he there, he said, oh yes, and, and uh, if you pray towards this place and you do what I say, and he, he, he made uh, thousands, actually thousands of sacrifices. And it wasn't, you know, they had a certain place where they sacrificed, but on the dedication of the temple, 
he had to add space out in front and sanctify it to be holy to kill more. And imagine all that slaughter. Can you imagine all the blood and guts that was around there? They had to kill all these. What was all the blood and guts about? Let me tell you what the blood and guts was about. The blood and guts was about the blood of Jesus Christ. Because every one of those thousands and thousands and thousands of sacrifices that were made were the picture, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, you say, the liberals, they say about Varga, he preaches a slaughterhouse religion. You call it anything you want, but without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins, you understand? Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So dear one, dear one, um, how beautiful this was. And he said, oh, there will always be looking towards this. And there will always be someone in a man. You see, he wasn't talking about a physical structure. He was talking about a position. He was talking about a people. He was talking about godliness and listening to the word of God. There's nothing sacred about a building, about that first temple that was glorious. By the way, it was so much glorious, more glorious than the second temple. It said the young men were rejoicing and praising God when they built the second temple, and it said the old men were crying. Why were the old men crying? Because they saw the glory of the first temple, which was much more, much more majestic than, than the glory of, of the second temple. But here you have it. And he said, and he said this. He said, if you don't listen to me, I won't hear your prayers. And if you won't listen to me, this temple will be destroyed, which it was. If you won't listen to me, your nation will come to nothing. That's where we are right now. What can change it? Only God's people praying and repenting and turning from their sins. How many of you are really born again Christians here today? You're born again. You're a saved person. All right, God bless you. Now, only we can be God's instruments to change America. Only we can be God's instruments to change America. That's all. I ain't talking about Republican, Democrat. I'm not talking about Trump or Hillary. You say, what's your opinion? I don't think either one of them are saved. I have some encouragement from Donald Trump. He said he, he had the Bible he had when he was a kid. He's a Presbyterian. I'm not a Presbyterian. I'm a Baptist preacher. My mother and father were Assemblies of God missionaries, Pentecostal. And I was saved in a Methodist church. It don't matter if you're Pentecostal or Baptist or Methodist. No don't matter what your church is. It matters if you're born again. Amen? Amen. 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 So he says, he waved his Bible in the, in, the, in the air, and he says, this is my favorite book. You laugh and you say, he don't know nothing about the Bible. I think you're right. He quoted, probably, he probably memorized one verse in the Bible maybe, out of John, Jesus wept. That might be the extent of his memory, memory verse. I don't know. Well, I tell you what, at least he said something about it. And let me say this to you. You say, he did this, that, and the other thing. What have you done? And it's something we can always point at Hillary or point at Donald or, or point at someone else and say, look what they've done. You better worry about what you've done, friend. You better worry about, you better get your own house cleaned up first. You better look in the mirror and, and repent. Because what verse 14 says, If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked way. We have no hope here in America today because of the wicked ways of Christians. Get the beer out of your icebox. Get the, get the uh, uh, cigarettes out of your pocket and your purse. Quit shacking up. Quit lying and stealing. Quit your laziness. Talk to someone today that, that ain't worked in three years. You know what? You know why you don't work in three years and you're able to move your hands and do stuff? You're lazy. 
You're sleuthful. You don't want to work. I don't know. The person I talked to is in the room here, and maybe there's others like them in here too. So the problem with America today, there's too, there's too many people that are, are too heavy for light work and too light for heavy work. They don't want to work. Now, I'm glad for safety nets. I'm glad for, uh, for people uh, uh, that can be helped. I'm so glad one of our, our, our church members, uh, Bridget, and her precious little son, Daniel, they're, they're receiving, applying, and going to receive some help because she's a single mother here in America, and my heart goes out to single mothers have a little child or two or whatever and, and, and need help because because someone has uh, fathered a child and abandoned the family and so on and so forth. I don't have it's I mean it's all over the place. It's everywhere. But I'm thankful that there's a safety net that can help Bridget and Daniel today. And I'm thankful that there are safety nets for those that are disabled and can't work or for various different reasons uh, they can have anybody in America today can go to the can go to the uh, uh, hospital and go to the emergency room, and uh, they can't refuse you care. They now they try to avoid you sometimes. Don't get, I know what you're going to say, <laughs> but but you you can get help. So I'm I'm glad for for all of that. But all of these things, government money going to kill babies, Planned Parenthood. You know, they're such liars, and those that support killing babies, they say, oh, Planned Parenthood is so wonderful. Planned Parenthood, they're for family planning. They're for killing babies! Right. Abortion is such a small part of what they do. Today, I sent out to some of you, get it on the internet, there's a, there's a, a ticker clicking over. The last I looked at the clicker was about a week ago. Planned Parenthood in America has murdered, murdered through Planned Parenthood over 274,000 babies. They're the, biggest, they're the biggest organization in America that murders babies. You hear some of these political heads say, oh, oh, I heard uh, uh, this guy, I think his name is... Patrick Murphy, maybe he's running for senator against Rubio. He even run a, he's even running an ad. He was running an ad about how terrible it was that that Rubio was for for life and killing me. He come out. He's so in your face, wicked, that he would dare to put an ad up on television condemning those that would support life. That's the America we live in today. We're presidential candidate would stand up and bold and, and blatantly say that they would be up for <coughs> partial birth abortion, sucking the brains out of a baby. You see, why are you so passionate about it? If you're not passionate about it, there's something wrong with you. Anybody, you call yourself a Christian, you call yourself anybody that has any moral responsibility, and you would vote for anyone that's for killing babies, there's something wrong with you. You call yourself a Christian, you're not much of a Christian if you are at all. If you are at all. You say, well, what, what do you say? I'm just a, you know, I'm just a fruit inspector. I, only God knows if you're saved or not. But I kind of like to be a fruit inspector sometime and see if a person is wicked. If they shack up and lie and kill babies and get high and on and on. I just kind of say, uh, oh, you say you're a Christian. Maybe you are, but I won't sign no affidavit for you. America's in trouble. We've got so we've got so much that uh, and and whether Hillary wins or where whether Donald Trump wins, this truth that I'm preaching will be the same. We have to change. You and I, Christian <coughs> friends, here in the audience and out in the internet audience, we have to examine ourselves. First of all, we need to examine ourselves and see whether we be in the faith. Are we in the faith? Are we truly a believer? Are you truly saved? Have you put your faith? Have you put your faith? I was so glad even just this past Sunday. Bridget's only been saved a few weeks. 
she followed the Lord in believer's baptism. Many of you that are even sitting here and people in our church, they, they've been saved and followed the Lord in believer's baptism. That's a wonderful thing. We need all of us that have followed the Lord and been saved. We need to examine ourselves and we need to seek God's face and turn from our wicked way. How many of you got some wickedness in you? Y'all better raise your hand. Y'all better raise your hand. The only ones that ain't raising their hand are, are lost people. They don't even know they're wicked. They'll realize it when they get to hell. You're sitting in here today lost when you're burning in hell and weeping and wailing and crying out, Lord, help me. And like and like Davies from, uh, uh, from the book of Luke, chapter 16, he says, please just let Abraham, uh, uh, I'm sorry, just, uh, uh, who's the guy's name? Lazarus. Lazarus, thank you. Please let Lazarus just bring me a little water to put on my tongue. He said, no, you're going to burn in hell forever and ever. Send someone from hell to my five brothers that they can be saved. No, if they won't listen to Moses and the prophet. You know what Moses and the prophet is? That's the Bible. They won't listen to Moses and the prophet. They won't listen to Varga preaching. They're at the rescue mission. They won't listen to that. They'll burn in hell. And if someone was sent... From hell itself to tell how terrible it is, they wouldn't believe them. Just like you that aren't saved here today won't believe me. We're in trouble. Yeah. God, where that America is that close to extinct, extinction, to being wiped off the face of the earth. Like Sodom and Gomorrah, it went up in flames. Like ancient Greece, like ancient Rome, like ancient Babylon, like any wicked, see, it always were sowing and reaping. You dishonor God and hate God and, you, and you, your nation will be destroyed. Your church, our church will be destroyed like many have been. You as a personal Christian will be destroyed. Listen now, listen now, I have a message today. <coughs> Whether Trump wins or whether Hillary wins, this message is true, and we need, we need to practice Second Chronicles seven fourteen. God's people, saved people. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, then what I hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sins, your sins and mine, and heal their land. Today. I'm saying, if you haven't voted yet, vote for life. Vote for life. Don't vote for death. I voted for life. That's been my theme here for quite a while now, for a number of weeks. Vote for life. I hope, if you haven't voted yet, I hope you'll vote for life. You won't vote for death. Oh, Lord, help us. We need to call America back to God. We're going to have a word of prayer. Let us bow for prayer right now. You say, Pastor Varga, I'm a saved person. I'm a born-again, blood-washed Christian. I'm, I'm saved and I know it. Would you slip your hand up? Let me see your hands. I'm saved. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Put your hands down. You say, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm saved. If my heart stopped beating tonight, I'm not sure if I died, I'd go to heaven and I need your prayer. Please pray for me by being saved. I'm not sure I'm saved. Just slip your hand up. Let me see your hand. Just slip it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God bless you. Anyone else? Just slip your hand up. Say, pray for me. There's been several raised their hands. Would you Would you join? Yes, God bless you. God bless you, sir. Anyone else? You say, I need to be saved. We've had several here in our audience live that have raised their hands. How about you out in the internet? How about you that will see this in some format? Are you saved today? Many of you, you can raise your hand. Many of you can't. <coughs> do you want prayer to be saved? Would you consider it and would you do it today? It's a free gift. 
If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Why don't you do it today? Why don't you trust him? Only trust him. Only trust him. Only trust him now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you now. We're going to have the, the prayer of repentance for we that are here and those that are on in the internet. And let us pray for these. Now, Lord, thank you for these that have raised their hand here and the many. I hope thousands out on the internet have raised their hands. They need to be saved. If you'll confess with your mouth, believe Jesus died for your sins personally, not nothing to do with the church or baptism or good works, but just repenting as a sinner. Believing Christ died for you and rose again the third day and say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer. And you, you pray it in your heart as I pray it out loud. This is a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross and rose from the grave the third day. The best I know how, with an honest heart, I turn from my sin and I receive you as my Savior and my only hope of a home in heaven. Thank you for saving me right now. You're here in the audience, in the auditorium, and you say, I'm receiving, I prayed that prayer and I meant it. Would you slip your hand up if you did it today and you meant it? Slip, leave it up, keep, keep your hand up here, keep it up a minute. Lord, we've had six that have received Christ as Savior in our live audience here. We thank you for it, dear Lord. And I hope thousands that are out there in the viewing audience throughout the Internet, thank you that you're still in the saving business. Thank you, dear Lord. Help us now, these that have been saved today, and we that are saved, that we would turn from our sin as God's people, turn from our wicked way and repent, then will God forgive our sin and heal our land. Help us now, dear Lord, on this election day, November 8th, 2016. Thank you for being a wonderful Savior. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.